John, that was a great job. Um, and I think it was a great example of the power of story. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine my two topics. I'm going to talk about how you use raving fans to create a local advantage. One of the other things I'm going to do right up front is tell you there's a great service. How many of you are, you, uh, you are familiar with SlideShare? Have you heard of SlideShare? Okay. Well, to get the full advantage of this presentation, I suggest you go out to SlideShare and download it because at the end of this presentation, I've got a lot of resources for you that are going to be hyperlinked, which I'm not going to go through. But you can download this presentation, and then you can, um, you'll have access to those. And uh, SlideShare is now owned by LinkedIn. So the beauty of using SlideShare is when you set it up, you put keywords in there. And if you haven't used SlideShare, it's an incredible resource. If you've got a challenge or a problem that you're dealing with, go search, just go to SlideShare. <coughs> And there's all kinds of presentations out there that you'll see. So anyway, please. Uh, actually, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, and SlideShare is now on my profile. So you can see it in there. So it gives you visibility. Uh, it's a way to become a thought leader. Because what John did was he gave you some very practical, great tips for going out and selling. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of a step back, and I'm going to start with a story. Um, recently, my wife and I decided that we needed a new washer and dryer. So we did our homework, and we went to a major retailer, and we said, this is the washer and dryer that we want. And so it begins. And so basically, we had to go fix up this closet we've got for all this stuff, and we told them what we wanted, and then guess what? When it came, it wasn't what we wanted. And so we had a washer but no dryer. So no problem, they'll send another dryer. So they sent another dryer, and guess what? It wasn't right. So we said, okay, we need another dryer. And they said, well, that dryer is no longer in stock. So we said, my wife just said, you know what? Just send it all back, and let's start over. Well, the bottom line is we ended up going with a local place. And you know why we ended up going with a local place? Because of all the gaps. Because with the major retailer, we had to do all the work. And so we're going to talk about how important a customer experience is. Because the local dealer in this case had the advantage for us because number one, they had the product or service. That's a given. More important, we knew where they lived. We knew where to go. We spent half our time with the other one just trying to find out who that we should talk to. So that, when you're talking about business, some of what I'm gonna tell you may feel a little bit like it's on the soft side, but this is the foundation. These are the important things. These are the things you need to think about so that when you do the things that John talked about, you're doing about them uh, with a different mindset. And just like we thought about this topic tonight from different perspectives, that's what I'm going to try and challenge you to do tonight is think about things from a little bit different perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to switch, and at the end I'm going to give you some very specific things that you can do, some resources that you can use, some things, practical things that you can use. So, when we talk about this whole customer experience, creating raving fans, uh, that local advantage, what are some of the challenges? Well, gosh, there's online competition. Uh, large chains are offering stuff. You know, if you're a small business person, you're thinking, oh my gosh, here, they, here these big organizations are, they're gonna run me out of business. They got more people, more this, more this, and got less price. You're thinking about awareness. Eh, nobody knows who I am. And I've heard that several times today. I've got a great product or service, but nobody knows who I am. You've got limited resources. My gosh, I'm, you know, especially if you're smaller, you're doing a lot of this stuff yourself, or there's just no time to do it. And then, most importantly, what I find a lot of times is like, who are my customers? Who are my fans? You know, a lot, we may have an idea, but do we really have an idea? Uh, why do my customers buy from me? And I'm sure as you're sitting there, you're thinking, yeah, but he didn't say this, or yes, but he didn't say that. Well, guess what? You're not alone. In a recent survey, only 38% of marketers could tell the difference between a prospect and a customer. So it's very difficult to create a raving fan if you don't even know who your customers are. And so I think, again, this is kind of a holdover from the way we used to market which was spray and pray, you know, we just send the message out there, just keep sending, just keep going, and if we send it, they will come. And, and you know what, in some respects, that's worked. So, what kind
kind of experience the customers want? Well, they want a seamless experience. And when I say omni-channel, that's one of the things I'm trying to do is to speak English and not marketing. Omni-channel is, if you think about it, uh, how many of you watch television and you notice a little bitty cross bar, like tic-tac-toe bar down at the side with a hashtag with a, with a uh, some kind of a, you know, you're watching Great Weight Loss, GWB, or something like that. Well, the reason they do that is because they know that people watching TV are sitting there with their iPad in front of them, and they're having another conversation about the show on social media. Um, how many times do you do you see that you start on one particular, like you start a search on your phone, or you start a search on your tablet, and then you go to your computer, and you're... So people are moving from channel to channel to channel, and they're very comfortable doing that. And you know what? When they go from their phone to their iPad, guess what? They don't want to start over. I mean, if you look at the surveys, what's one of the number one things that irritates a customer? Having to give the same information over and over and over. I mean, if you think about it, you could probably give me a scenario. You're on hold, enter your account number. What's the first thing the customer service asks you for when they pick up the phone? And, and when you when you moan about it, what do they say? Well, we need to do that for security. You know why they do that? To give you something to do so that you don't notice how long you're waiting on hold. I'm sure there are other reasons, but that's one of them. People want communication that's relevant to them, where they are, when they're ready. Uh, utility. They want something. Like for me, utility is my wife sends me to the grocery store an app that tells me where in the heck the store the item is. That's utility. That is worth something to me because that helps. For her, she doesn't need it. She knows where the stuff is. I don't. That's utility. Convenience. It saves time. Can you imagine a, a number of years ago when, when people would have said to you that waiting on yourself is actually a benefit? I, I mean, I can remember in the good old days, you used to have to call an 800 number for Federal Express. Some of you here may remember that. If you wanted to know where your package was, you had to call an 800 number. Well, guess what? Saving you time, let me go on and do it myself. Less Little friction. What I mean by little friction is make it easier. Look at what Amazon does with one click. I go into Amazon. I can place an order with just one click. Another similar site, I might have to click and click and click. They're reducing friction. They're making it easier for me to do business with them. And so when, when we think about the goal, I saw this. Uh, Seth Godin is a... a guy that I like to read every day. He, he's just a very thought-provoking guy. I thought this captured it. Is the goal to get people to notice what we make, or are we setting out to make something that people choose to talk about? Now, I think, I don't know about you, most of us aspire to this, but we live there. And so what I'm challenging you to do is the whole idea about customer experience marketing is to think like your customer. Because most of us don't. Most of us are so, we're in our offices, we're thinking from a, here's the attributes, here's why somebody would want to buy my product. And I would challenge you that if you, if you think about the experience, like I'll give you an example, and, and this is something that you don't have to, don't even have to have social media or anything else. How many of you have heard of Trader Joe's? My wife and I love to go to Trader Joe's. Can you believe that? I mean, we've got a grocery store just up the street, which we do go to, but we love to go to Trader Joe's. We love the atmosphere. We love the product that they have. They're setting out to make something that we choose to talk about. Trader Joe's actually, where, where they don't have stores, they actually have people who write in and, and, and put up signs to get them to come there. And, and what I love about it is you walk into the store and you look at the folks who are working there and, and, and immediately my, my sort of small brain kicks in and you're thinking, this could be interesting, but you know what? You get the same helpful experience from every single person you talk to in their own way. They're not reading from a script. You don't. Fine. <laughs> Fine. Fine. All right. So, how by interacting with data, uh, data is, an is a critical part of it. Um, you have to ask, you have to observe, you have to ask a lot of questions, you have to gain insight from the data. Um, here's a few questions just for rating, who are the top 10%? Uh,
would you like more of these? You wouldn't be surprised. You'd be surprised how many times people don't I actually don't want more of these. So make sure whoever your top two percent is, you really do want more. Make sure you can articulate your pain points. Uh, David versus Goliath, really interesting study that just came out from Harvard that shows that consumers love the little guy versus the big guy, and so they will actually vote with their money. Uh, the big guy is presumed guilty until proven innocent. In fact, they, they're not uh, innocent. Um, consumers want proximity. They want product details. These are the things they're looking for. Oops, sorry. So there's the, the raving fan ingredients, the things that go into it. Now, here's the resources. Um, think about doing an audit. Here's the way you can do it. Experience your brand for mobile. If you haven't, go on uh, your phone or your tablet, experience your brand, identify gaps. By gaps, what I mean, the frustration for me in the, uh, in the washer and dryer, nobody had responsibility. The manager of the store locally said, hey, it's, uh, you know, it's like everybody shrugs their shoulders. Nobody owns it. Uh, get feedback from everybody. Don't be afraid of it. I think too often we think about feedback is, how did I do? Think of another question. How could I do this better? Be willing to listen and to adapt and to judge. This is a blog post that I wrote that tells you how to do a journey map, so I won't bore you with that detail. Um, here's some tools that I thought you'd be interested in. These are tools. You don't have to spend a fortune to have the tools that you need. There's some free customer service apps in here that can really help you deliver uh, customer service. Uh, I love this app, right? I mean, this article is very deceiving. It says 11 terrible CRMs, and, and I started reading it, and I was really confused by the title. Guess what he says? The CRMs are great. The people who don't use them, that's the problem. So don't be deceived by that title. It's actually a really good um, resource. Survey. Survey found, uh, another recent Harvard study found, that if you will ask your customers uh, within the first like few days, weeks of the purchase, how are we doing? You'll ask them for, to rate you or whatever. 50% chance, 50% less likely to leave, three times more to buy another product for you. Ask. Everybody tells you, right? The conventional wisdom is don't ask people. They are sick of surveys. They don't want to answer. Guess what the research says? This is really critical. This, this particularly this um, third bullet point, on a scale of 1 to 10, would you recommend this to a friend or a colleague? If the answer is less than 8, you got a problem. Find out why. Don't just take the number. Say, what would it take for us to get a 10? Get some information. Use that. Uh, you don't need this, but if you wanted to do a more in-depth uh, survey monkey, it's a free tool that allows you to do surveys. But you don't need a lot of survey. Just a couple of questions will do the trick. Here, uh, claiming your local space and, and uh, technology, we'll probably get into this a little bit more, but here's some reef. Here's some resource. Uh, we talked. I talked earlier uh, about the importance of local sites. Google is giving a lot more credence to local. So if you've got the option to do a local site, you do a local site. These are some uh, great resources. One that I really would recommend, the Moz Learning Center. That's a great resource. If you go there, they break down different topics that I've been talking about. It's a great educational one. And you don't have to write this down. You can just download this presentation. You can click on this, and it'll take you there. So just go to SlideShare, download this. Uh, again, you can get this just by going to SlideShare and doing six ways to grow your business. You can go to my LinkedIn profile, and uh, we can connect. I'd love to do that. And you can, uh, you'll see this presentation there. And so um, Google Maps is another relatively new one. That's just how to get your visibility local. So. Um, that's it. That's who I am, and uh, look forward to talking to you.